How about divergence? We can get into that now. The divergence is the dot product of the del operator with our vector field. Let's go ahead and compute some examples. So we'll compute the divergence of f. And again, that's one notation using that dot product notation. The other notation is to just write div of f. And so for that, it's the x derivative of the first component, which is negative 1, plus the y derivative of the second component, plus the z derivative of the third, the third component, which is 0. So this is negative 2. So this value of negative 2 is in some sense telling me that this vector field is a compressing vector field. There's some compression involved. And so the idea is, is if we've got some blob we're thinking of maybe as gas, and as it moves through the vector field, it's compressing. And so that's what that divergence is telling us. How about this next example? So the divergence in this case of f is given by the x derivative of y which is 0 plus the y derivative of x which is 0 which is 0. So this has a divergence of 0. How about this next one? The divergence of this is 1 minus 1 which is 0. And lastly the divergence of this one is the x derivative of 0 plus the y derivative of x which is 0 plus the z derivative of 0. So all those things are 0 so this has a divergence of 0 as well. So these other three cases had divergence of 0. Now much like the previous case maybe there's something special about these vector fields for which the divergence was 0. Is there something special about them? Well it turns out there is. In this case part b it turns out that this vector field we're looking at is actually the curl of another vector field. It's the curl of negative one-half x squared minus one-half y squared k hat. So it's the curl of the vector field with zero component in the x direction, zero component in the y direction, but this negative one-half x squared, one-half y squared in the z direction. Similarly for this one below, this ends up being the curl of x, y, k hat. And this one is the curl of, you can pause the video and try, try to find this one yourself. It is the curl of 1 half x squared k hat. So maybe that's just a coincidence. Maybe it's a coincidence that the ones that turned out to be 0 were these ones that were actually curls of vector fields. And it turns out, well, we have this result. If our vector field is a vector field on R3 and has continuous second order partial derivatives, then the divergence of the curl is zero. So it was no surprise that we were going to get zero for these divergences in all three of these cases because each of the vector fields themselves was a curl and the divergence of a curl is zero. You can kind of think of it this way. We start with a vector field. When we take the curl of the vector field, what we try to pull out from the original vector field is just the rotational aspect of that vector field. And we, in some sense, are throwing away the compression expansion factor. So if we're just keeping the rotational part of it, then when I go to take the divergence of that, it's not diverging because I'm only pulling out the, the part that's, in some sense, swirling or rotating. So it's no surprise then that the divergence of the curl will be zero because I pulled out the rotational part and the divergence of that would be zero. All right, so that's a result. This theorem, I mean, you can check. You just check by direct calculation. We know what a curl is. We know what a divergence is. In fact, if we write it in the other notation using our del operator, it's del dot del cross f. And so this is a scalar triple product where in some, it's a formal scalar triple product where, in fact, two of the vectors are these, uh, these uh, del operators. But if I have any 
um, scalar triple product is essentially the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix and two of the rows are identical in this case. Two of the rows are those del operators. And so it's no surprise that we're going to get zero there. Okay, so that's the divergence and the curl of vector fields. So those are these kinds of derivatives we can attach, or these rates of change we can attach to vector fields. And we get a whole bunch of properties that they satisfy. So the first four properties are about gradients, and then the next bunch of properties are about curl and divergence. And then the last few properties involve um, the Laplacian operator. So you're encouraged to go ahead and try to prove these identities yourself. They just follow right from the definitions of scalar, dot, and uh, uh, cross product. Okay, so now that we've got this little bit of terminology behind us, let's revisit Green's theorem. And it turns out that Green's theorem can be written in terms of these notions of curl and divergence. Let's have a look back at Green's theorem. So remember, Green's theorem was saying that we've got this line integral. And I'll write it as the integral of f dot dr over some curve c. And what Green's theorem says is related to the double integral over the region of this object here, dq dx minus dp dy. And if we look closely at that, we'll see that that is precisely the z component of the curl of this vector field. And that's what we're going to write down now. We've got that We've got a curve, we've got our vector field. If we write down the curl of that vector field, it's just dq dx minus dp dy. That's in the k hat direction, in the z direction. And therefore, just rewriting Green's theorem, just like we had on the previous page, but now I'm rewriting it here. We got the left hand side, which is that line integral, and the right hand side, this whole thing is precisely dq dx minus dp dy. So the curl form of Green's theorem says that the line integral is the double integral of the curl of the vector field dotted with k hat. So I should, I should be a little bit more careful as to, to what's happening here. We've got our curl, it's a vector. It only has a component in the k direction, so that's why we're dotting it with k hat just to pull off that third component. That's why there's that dot product of the k hat there. We just want to pull off that third component, dq dx minus dp dy. So there's the vector form of Green's theorem. You know, does it help us use Green's theorem? Not really. It's just an, another way of phrasing Green's theorem using this terminology of curl. We can also get a divergence form of Green's theorem. So what is the divergence form of Green's theorem? Well, remember Green's theorem to start with, we started with this line integral, the integral of f dot dr. So that was just the integral along a curve of the component of the vector field that pointed in the direction of the tangent vector of r, of our curve that we're integrating along. So that's that f dot dr a little bit. But maybe we're interested in or integrating over the part of the vector field that points in the normal direction to the curve rather than the tangential direction. So instead maybe I want to work out what the normal vector at each point is and then with the vector field maybe the vector field does something like this. You now at each point the vector field will be filling up the entire plane but just along the boundary curve maybe there's you know, directions that the vector field is pointing in. And what I'm interested in is at each point I go along, what is the relationship between the vector field and the normal vector? So these green vectors I'm drawing in are normals to the curve C. And so I might be interested in is how the vector field, how much of the vector field points in the direction of the normal to the curve. So I've got my normal vector at each point on the curve written down here. That was basically obtained by, we know what the unit tangent vector is, so we just need to find the vector that's orthogonal to that, which we've written down there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate along the curve 
of the dot product of f with the normal vector, and I integrate with respect to arc length. That produces this integral here, just unpacking it. Unpacking a little more, we get this integral here. Unpacking a little more, we get this integral here. So that's just our line integral. And that's what I can use Green's theorem on. I'm integrating along a curve, so I can integrate over the region of the derivative of that vector field. And so this is Green's theorem. The derivative of that vector field, that would be the derivative of what's in front of dy with respect to x minus the derivative of what's in front of dx with respect to y. And so that just becomes dp dx plus dq dy, and that's precisely the divergence of the vector field pq. So this is our divergence form of Green's theorem. We use Green's theorem in here. In fact, Green's theorem is the glue that holds these integrals together that shows they're equal. So it says that if I integrate the vector field over the normal components to the curve, then what I get, it's equal to the integral of the divergence of the vector field over the whole region. Okay, again, this doesn't help us in using Green's theorem, but what it does is it gives us different perspectives to allow Green's theorem to give us insight into why divergence and curl would be important, how they could come up in other contexts. And this just forms the foundations. This is just the tip of the iceberg of vector calculus, which is a whole other course that follows this one. So that's Math 252. And it starts with these ideas, and it just grows from there.